The world under heaven, after a long period of division, tends to unite. After a long period of union, tends to divide. This has been so since antiquity. When the rule of the Zhou dynasty weakened, seven contending kingdoms sprang up, warring one with another until the kingdom of Qin prevailed and possessed the empire. But when Qin's destiny had been fulfilled, arose two opposing kingdoms, Chu and Han, to fight for the mastery, and Han was the victor. The rise of the fortunes of Han began when Lu Bang, the supreme ancestor, slew a white serpent to raise the banner of uprising, which only ended when the entire empire belonged to Han. This magnificent heritage was handed down to Han emperors for 200 years, until the rebellion of Wang Mang caused the disruption. But soon Lu Xu, the latter Han founder, restored the empire. And Han emperors continued their rule for another 200 years till the day of Emperor Xi'an. Which were doomed to see the beginning of the empire's division into three parts, known to history as the Three Kingdoms. But the descent into misrule hastened in the reigns of the two predecessors of Emperor Xi'an, Emperors Huan and Ling, who sat in the dragon throne about the middle of the second century. Emperor Huan paid no heed to the good people of his court, but gave the confidence to the palace eunuchs. He lived and died, leaving the scepter to Emperor Ling, whose advisors were Regent Marshal Do Wu and Imperial Guardian Chen Fan. Do Wu and Chen Fan, disgusted with the abuse of the eunuchs and the affairs of the state, plotted the destruction for the power of using eunuchs. But Chief Eunuch Cao Ji was not to be disposed of easily. The plot leaked out and the honest Dou Wu and Chen Fan were put to death, leaving the eunuchs stronger than before. It fell upon the day of the full moon of the fourth month, the second year in the era of established calm, that Emperor Ling went in state to the Hall of Virtue. As he drew near the throne, a rushing whirlwind arose in the corner of the hall and, lo, from the roof beams floated down a monstrous black serpent that coiled itself up on the very seat of majesty. The emperor fell in a swoon, while the courtiers scattered and fled, the serpent disappeared, but there followed a horrific tempest, thunder, hail, and torrents of rain, lasting till midnight and working havoc on all sides. Two years later, the earth quaked in the capital Luoyang, while along the coast a huge tidal wave rushed in which, in its recoil, swept away all the dwellers by the sea. Another evil omen was recorded ten years later, when the Rian title was changed to Radiant Harmony, certain hens suddenly crowed. At the new moon of the sixth month, a long wreath of murky cloud wound its way into the Hall of Virtue, while in the following month, a rainbow was seen in the dragon's chamber. Away from the capital, a part of the Yuan Mountains collapsed, leaving a mighty rift in the flank. Such were some of various omens. Emperor Ling, greatly moved by these signs of displeasure of heaven, issued an edict asking his ministers for an explanation of the calamities and marvels. Court counselor Kai Yang replied bluntly, Falling rainbows and changes in foul sexes are brought about by the interference of empresses and eunuchs in state affairs. The emperor read this memorial with deep sighs, and chief eunuch Cao Ji, from his place behind the throne, anxiously noted these signs of grief. An opportunity offering, Cao Ji informed his fellows, and a charge was trumped up against Kai Yang, who was driven from the court and forced to retire to his country house. With this victory, the eunuchs grew bolder. Ten of them, rivals in wickedness and associates in evil deeds, formed a powerful party known as the Ten Regular Attendants. Zhang Rang, Zhao Zong, Cheng Kuang, Duan Gui, Fang Zhu, Guo Sheng, Hu Lan, Jian Shou, Cao Ji, and Xia Yan. One of them, Zhang Rang, won such influence that he became the emperor's most trusted and honored advisor. The emperor even called him foster father, so the corrupt state administration went quickly from bad to worse, till the country was ripe for rebellion and buzzed with brigandage. At this time in the county of Julu was a certain Zhang family, of whom three brothers bore the name of Zhang Jiao, Zhang Ba, and Zhang Liang, respectively. The eldest Zhang Jiao was an unclassed graduate, who devoted himself to medicine. One day, while culling simples in the woods, Zhang Zhao met a venerable old gentleman with very bright emerald eyes and fresh complexion, who walked with an oak wood staff. The old man beckoned Zhang Zhao into a cave and there gave him three volumes of the Book of Heaven. This book, said the old gentleman, 
is the essential arts of peace. With the aid of these volumes, you can convert the world and rescue humankind. But you must be single-minded, or rest assured, you will greatly suffer. With a humble obeisance, Zhang Zhao took the book and asked the name of his benefactor. I am Saint Hermit of the Southern Land, was the reply, as the old gentleman disappeared in thin air. Zhang Zhao studied the wonderful book eagerly and strove day and night to reduce its precepts to practice. Before long, he could summon winds and command the rain, and he became known as the mystic of the way of peace. In the first month of the first year of central stability, there was a terrible pestilence that ran throughout the land, whereupon Zhang Zhao distributed charmed remedies to the afflicted. The godly medicine brought big successes, and soon he gained the title of the wise and worthy master. He began to have a following of disciples whom he initiated into the mysteries and sent abroad throughout all the land. They, like their master, could write charms and recite formulas, and their fame increased his following. Zhang Zhao began to organize his disciples. He established 36 circuits, the larger with 10,000 or more members, the smaller with about half that number. Each circuit had its chief who took the military title of general. They talked wildly of the death of the blue heaven and setting up of the golden one. They said a new cycle was beginning and would bring universal good fortune to all members. They persuaded the people to chop the symbols for the first year of the new cycle on the main door of their dwellings. With the growth of the number of his supporters grew also the ambition of Zhang Jiao. The wise and worthy master dreamed of empire. One of his partisans, Ma Yuan Yi, was sent bearing gifts to gain the support of the eunuchs within the palace. To his brother, Zhang Jiao said, For schemes like ours, always the most difficult part is to gain the popular favor. But that is already ours. Such an opportunity must not pass. And they began to prepare. Many yellow flags and banners were made, and a day was chosen for the uprising. Then Zhang Zhao wrote letters to the eunuch Fang Zhu and sent them by one of his followers, Tang Zhou, who alas, betrayed his trust and reported the plot to the court. The emperor summoned the trusty regent marshal Yi Jin and bade him to look into the issue. Ma Yuan Yi was at once taken and beheaded. Feng Zhu and many others were cast into prison. The plot having thus become known, the Zhang brothers were forced at once to take the field. They took up grandiose titles. Zhang Jiao the Lord of Heaven, Zhang Ba the Lord of Earth, and Zhang Liang the Lord of Human. In these names they put forth this manifesto. The good fortune of the Han is exhausted. The wise and worthy man has appeared. Discern the will of Heaven, O ye people and walk in the way of righteousness, whereby alone ye may attain to peace. Support was not lacking. On every side, people bound their heads with yellow scars and joined the army of the rebel Zhang Jiao, so that soon his strength was nearly half a million strong, and the official troops melted away at a whisper of his coming. Regent Marshal and Guardian of the Throne, He Jin, memorialized for a general preparation against the yellow scars and an edict called upon everyone to fight against the rebels. In the meantime, three imperial commanders, Lu Zi, Huang Fu Song, and Zhu Jun, marched against them in three directions with veteran soldiers. Meanwhile, Zhang Zhao led his army into Yuzhou, the northern region of the empire. The imperial protector of Yuzhou was Liu Yan, a scion of the imperial house. Learning of the approach of the rebels, Liu Yan called in commander Zhou Jing to consult over the position. Zhou Jing said, They are many and we are few. We must enlist more troops to oppose them.